here on another day in the book St. Michael's, Maryland. Pulled in. It's a nice little downtown and free parking. That's the first time so far I have found parking that fast and it's free. We went walking downtown for a little bit where I ran into Misty at Woodcraft Artisans there in downtown and she recommended three things. The Crab Claw, it's a restaurant. It's apparently the restaurant to go to. It's been there the longest. The Patriot, it's a big giant boat that takes you up on a tour. She also recommended going to the Maritime Museum. So that is where I went to. It was a wonderful museum. It took a few hours. I got there around three and I left around five. So when you go, plan accordingly. It does take some time and you have to go it's their main attraction walk in first thing you see is some of the boats they have sailboats they have rowboats and they also have carved out of the log boats really cool to see no you don't get into any of them uh, there are some boats you can go into to the right of there you go into this wood making shop and they are actively making wooden boats after that you loop around and there's a lighthouse go up into the lighthouse it is the screw lighthouse named for how the pylons go into the ground they have a screw at the bottom screws it in holds it down tight inside the sand therefore when ice comes around it's not trying to push this lighthouse out and it was one of the scariest things at the time being a lighthouse keeper because you're about five miles out in shore don't know what's happening and a few people did die either on their way to the lighthouse or at the lighthouse themselves they had pictures and you would open up the person's name and read a little bit about them and Georgie Wheatley, who was a keeper from 1894 to 1898, has the history of all but my name has disappeared from the historical records. Come down into the lighthouse and you hit the history of the bay. You see about the sailboat racing and how it's changed where it used to be sailboats would line up and you'll all be friends and talking with each other. And you could actually walk across the boats in the bay. Now, sailboats come, they do their race, and at the end of the day, they all go their different ways. And it's really sad for the people that used to be racing to see that happen. Walk a little bit and you have the hydroplane racing, the speedboats, and how your average person in, back in the day would be able to race because it only cost ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. I mean, still a pretty penny, but for what you're doing, it's not bad. Now you got fifteen, twenty thousand dollars just in safety equipment that goes into your boat and not enough people are doing it and it's sad for those people to see the decline and the price increase. Come out of that building and right next to it is a little history of crabbing. Down the ways is a history of oystering. A company doing crabbing actually got a de sheller so they wouldn't have to have people and to pay their employees what they found out was that the d sheller wasn't a hundred percent accurate and they still needed the people to d shell the stuff that was missed the crumbs the other building had about oystering and they would have different type of techniques one where you would pick up from the bottom all the way from your boat lift it up and into your boat and let go then you sort it find the oysters that's good and toss the rest back another part you could do is dredging although for a while dredging became illegal just because it was sucking up so much of the oysters off the bottom an oyster can't grow on the sand it either attaches to rocks or other oysters and now people are tossing their oysters back into the bay to make new oysters grow kind of cool to see that that wrapped up the museum pretty much started walking back towards my car through downtown and everything started to close up except the restaurant and i'm thinking i should go eat to experience the seafood but I'm not hungry, so we're going to save that till tomorrow when we are in Cape May, New Jersey. 
and that's where we're gonna get our seafood fix. I have expanded a little bit. You've got my Snapchat, I've got Polar Steps, and now I have Instagram and Twitter going on. Got those yesterday, still trying to figure out how to work all of them. So bear with me when you follow, and I'll have all the description down below so you can follow along live.